Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about saws because when starting off, you've got lots of different sizes, you've got lots of different shapes, you've got different teeth patterns to choose from. It can be a bit of a minefield. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the process of buying your first lot of saws, whether that's multiple saws or just one of them. So let's go. Right, so before we start anything, I'm going to clarify something. In this video, I'm going to be referring a lot to rip cuts and cross cuts. And as a beginner, a lot of you might not know what that means. A rip cut and a cross cut is basically different methods of filing the teeth on a saw. So a saw with a rip tooth pattern is going to be more efficient at cutting with the grain. A cross cut is the opposite. You will be cutting across the lines in the timber. So think perhaps cutting this bit of wood in half. And this is usually the easiest way of remembering it because if you use a cross cut saw, you want to be cutting across the grain. So severing those fibres in half rather than cutting along the direction of them. So that is rip and cross cut and that is the two tooth patterns we're going to be focusing on today. Let's now get in close and see what's on this table. So also before I go any further I just want to say that I am talking about all of these saws in the context of furniture making. If you're looking for information on saws to help you with carpentry or larger scale projects for example, this may help you, but it's not going to be as specific. So let's start with panel saws. Now, obviously most of you probably have one of these in your garage. Uh, it's probably one of the disposable ones in most cases where they have the hardened teeth on them. You cut through a few things with it, it gets dull, you throw it away, you buy a new one. And usually these hardened tip saws come with a universal cut on them. So it's not gonna be specific to rip or cross cut. It's just gonna do both of them at an all right standard. So the ones I've got here is a rip panel saw and a cross cut panel saw and the characteristics of these obviously you've got a blade that is unrestricted by a spine on the back so you can literally cut to an infinite depth of these and also the handle is a good enough size to not only get one hand on it but you can put one hand on the top like that and really force it through the cut making your cuts more efficient. And the primary area that you're gonna be using these is if you were wanting to make this into a chopping board, for example, you would use your rip cut saw to cut along the grain, and then you would use your cross cut one to cut across it. And there you go, that's your rough shape cut out of it. So for me, I have, obviously I've got band saws, I've got table saws available for me. So I don't usually find a use for these. The only time I have needed one of these is when I was cutting rough timber to length and I had the pullover saw and I pulled it back and it wasn't quite able to reach far enough over to finish off the cut widthwise. So I had to go as far as I could and then finish it off with my cross cut saw. It's also worth saying that you can get these in different tooth patterns as well. So for example, this rip cut saw here, this is primarily used for shaping rough timber like I've just shown you. But if you have your panels pre-planed, for example, and they're all really nice and smooth and pretty much ready to go, you just need to cut one side parallel to the other. You can also get a rip saw that has a much finer cut on it, so it's not going to chew up the timber as much as a coarse one like this. So that's panel saws. I don't generally have a massive need for them, but I like to keep them on hand, and when I do need them, I need them. So quite nice to have. Now on this side here, we've got our three sizes of Western style saws. So on the top here, we've got a tenon saw. In the middle, we've got a carcass. And the smaller one here is a dovetail saw. And what I mean by Western saws is that they cut on the push stroke. Chances are, if you're just starting off in woodworking or fine woodworking, furniture making, whatever, you have been using Western style saws up until this point. And this is where I'd like to introduce you to Japanese saws. Now, Japanese saws cut on the pull stroke. So you know when you're using a Western style saw like this, a push saw, and you're trying to get it started in the cut and it's just sticking in and you push really hard and then it suddenly shoots forward. You maybe miss the line or whatever you're trying to cut to. You put a big cut next to it. So instead what you do is you resort to dragging it back a few times to create that groove in the top of the timber and then you commit to that. That is where Japanese saws are brilliant for beginners because a lot of beginners are used to dragging back to start their cuts. In dragging back with this, it actually starts cutting rather than just eroding away the timber like it does on a push saw. Also, the advantage of it being on a pull stroke is that they're able to make the saw plates on them a lot thinner because obviously as you pull it back, 
it pulls itself into tension. Whereas on a Western style saw like this, if they made the plates too thin and you pushed it forward, it's gonna bend and buckle all over the place. And the other thing to note about Japanese saws is that they are not resharpenable because the teeth on them are generally hardened and also the teeth pattern on them is incredibly difficult to match with a file. So instead to resharpen it, you'll simply undo a little knob or something like this and the blade will just come out like that. So some of them have this knob here, but other ones the blade kind of hooks out beyond the spine here and you have to hit it like that. And it just works with a friction fit in the spine here. So if you're a beginner, definitely get into a store that stocks Japanese saws and have a go with them because I guarantee you, you will find it so much easier. At Axminster, as soon as a beginner picks up one of these and tries it, they will generally take it over a Western style saw any day. So now let's go over these two in the middle. These are called gent saws and the differences between these is obviously one is bigger than the other. This one is a Western style, so again, it cuts on the push stroke and this one is a Japanese gent saw, cuts on the pull stroke. Now these are great for fine work, especially this little Japanese one. If I'm doing really small dovetails in say five millimeter thick components, this is really nice and delicate for it. Whereas something of this size or this size is quite clumsy to work on a component that small. Another thing to note about gent saws is that the handles on them are turned or round. And this can be a problem for beginners when you're trying to develop your muscle memory. So if I was to pick up this Western style saw, for example, first thing you would need to know about these is when you pick them up, the handles generally feel quite small to start with. And in most cases, that's because you don't have your index finger pointing down the spine like that. And the reason we do that is to help you track the blade forwards and backwards through the cut. And it allows you to keep the blade cutting straighter in there. If you try and crunch all four fingers up in there, it can sort of wobble about a bit, something like that gives you more location. On a Japanese saw, the handles on them are round, but they're actually an oval shape. Again, you pick it up, you point your finger down the blade like that, and that gives you your forward and back tracking on it. However, with a handle that's perfectly round like this, if you were to pick it up and point your finger down the blade like that, it's still quite easy to pick up the saw at a slight angle. So like I said, if you're trying to develop muscle memory and you're wanting to cut perfectly down to a line on a dovetail, for example, if you pick up that at a slight angle, it's gonna start tracking one way or the other. You're gonna wonder why your cuts aren't progressing very easily. With something like this, you pick it up, you've got location in the palm of your hand, and you've also got the location by pointing your index finger down the blade. Therefore, you pick it up in exactly the same way each time. Same with a Western style saw like this. There is no way you can pick this up the wrong way. So gent saws, they're all right, but for beginners, I don't generally recommend them. So I'm gonna get rid of them. And also, I'll probably get rid of the panel saws because they're just in the way now. Right, so now let's focus on these different sizes we've got here. I'm gonna keep the Japanese one out for reference purposes. So let's start narrowing these down to what they actually do and what ones you might actually need at the end of it. Now this Japanese saw is a Dazuki saw, which is the same as a dovetail saw. The cut on it is filed to a rip pattern, therefore it's better at cutting with the grain. So with a dovetail, you're cutting through the end grain and along the length of the timber, a rip cut. So the Dazuki is pretty much the same as a dovetail saw, it's just a Western and a Japanese style saw. This one here, the Karka saw, is kind of the all-round saw. So if you watch my plane video, you'll know that I said a jack plane is an all-round plane. That's because it's sort of the middle size. Karka saw, exactly the same of the saw weld. It's the middle size, therefore it excels at doing smaller jobs and it excels at doing bigger jobs. And moving on from that, this tenon saw is filed to a rip cut, but it is a rip cut that is far coarser than the dovetail saw here. So for example, as the name would imply, if I was cutting a massive tenon on the end of this component, that dovetail saw, because it's got a really fine tooth, it's just gonna clog up as I cut through that. Whereas if I use something with not only coarser teeth on it, but with a much longer plate, you're gonna be able to get longer passes on the saw through there and therefore it's gonna be much more efficient at cutting and you'll have to put less effort into it. And as a result, your cut will end up better because the saw is doing the work for you rather than you trying to shove this thing through the cut. So let's talk you through which sizes I would advise getting and which tooth patterns I would advise getting as well. So if you are able to buy three saws, I would go for these three, obviously. Firstly, make sure you get yourself a dovetail saw and ensure that it's a rip cut in it because like I said, dovetails you're going to be cutting with the grain. In the middle, get yourself a carcass saw, but get yourself a cross cut pattern on this. So this would be incredibly handy if you were cutting the cheeks off of tenons, for example, or if you were cutting furniture components to size. It's a good all round size that you're not limited too much by the spine on it. If you were removing the material on the end of a dovetail, for example, on the tail section, 
Something like this with a cross-cut pattern would be far too clumsy for something that small. So this is a good all-round size saw to suit the smaller and the larger tasks. And as I said before, the tenon saw will be used for cutting your tenons. So it's got a really coarse tooth pattern on there. That's just gonna tear through it and you've got a good old depth on there. You can also get different size plates on it, but generally the tenons for the my work don't really go much deeper than that. So if you can get three saws, get those three. Tenon, carcass, dovetail saw. Just pick if you want to go Western or Japanese. I'm gonna get rid of the Japanese one now just to save confusion. Now this is where it gets quite tricky because if you were to choose two saws, it depends entirely on your own personal situation. For me, I can get away with just using these two saws because if I wanted to cut a tenon, I could do it on the bandsaw, for example. I wouldn't necessarily need something like this. I mean, to be honest, the main reason I bought it is because it looked pretty and it was new in stock. But I got away with these most of the time. I could do my dovetails of that and I could do most of my cross-cutting tasks. If, however, you do not have access to a bandsaw, the two I would recommend getting are a tenon saw and a dovetail saw, both in rip cut patterns. And the reason I'm saying to get them both in rip cut patterns is because rip obviously cuts with the grain. So dovetails, you're cutting with the grain, tenons, you're cutting with the grain, but also they can cut across the grain as well. It's just not as clean as a crosscut saw. So that's the trade-off by getting rid of the crosscut saw in that your crosscuts aren't gonna be as clean and controlled, but that will still do it. If you use a crosscut to try and cut with the grain, it is just so incredibly slow and it's not gonna work properly. So. Generally, rip cut saws are the more versatile of the two. So by getting these two saws, you're able to do your dovetails, you're able to do your tenons, and you're obviously able to cut things to length, just not as cleanly as you can with a crosscut carcass saw. Now let's get this even more confusing. If you're able to buy just one saw, it would be the carcass saw. So again, as I said in the planes video, the jack plane is generally regarded as the most versatile plane because it's the middle size of them all. So obviously with having this size, you've still got the versatility of still being able to do dovetails. It's obviously a little bit more clumsy than a designated dovetail saw, but you still can do it. And you can also do tenons to a certain depth of this as well. Also, you want the versatility in the tooth pattern as well. So don't get it in a cross cut, get it in a rip. So you can see that if you're gonna to need to start producing cross cuts later on, you're gonna to need to add a fourth saw in here, which is preferably a carcass saw, but with a cross cut pattern in it. That's where getting something as versatile as this in a rip cut pattern can come back and bite you in the ass when you want to start expanding your kit. So bear that in mind when you come to buy your first saws. Generally, what I recommend to people is I really try and push them to buy two saws to start with and make sure that those two saws that they buy is a dovetail saw with a rip pattern in it and a carcass saw with a cross cut pattern in it as your first option, or the second option being a dovetail saw, rip cut pattern still, and a tenon saw with a rip cut pattern. Then you can do all of your work with them, dovetails, tenons, and when you can eventually get it, get yourself a cross cut carcass saw. So there we go, that's pretty much all I have to say on the subject of saws. I have either completely clarified that issue for you, or I've given you even more options to think about and your brain has just gone absolutely haywire now. Hopefully it's the former option on that. But like I say, you just need to really look at what your current setup is and what you need in terms of hand saws. If you've got a band saw, you don't really need the tenon saw unless you want something pretty to look at, of course. If you have a band saw, dovetail saw, cross cut, carcass saw, should be fine for you. If you do not have a band saw and you can't cut tenons on machine, get yourself tenon saw with a rip cut and dovetail saw with a rip cut. And if you want three saws that can do all of the tasks for you, get yourself the three that I've shown you here. Rip dovetail saw, cross cut carcass saw, rip tenon saw. I have never found a need for anything else different in my setup. These are covered all grounds for me. Unless of course I needed to cut down some rough timber and I needed to use a panel saw. But for me, when it comes to cutting down rough timber, I like to use tools that I can plug into the wall. So yeah, of course, chuck your opinions below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, see you in the next video.